Hello, my dear brother and sister. Welcome to another episode of Zemozo, where we have kingdom conversations on the pathways of life. I bring you a message today from Ephesians 1 verses 1 and 2, and I read from the NLT. This letter is from Paul, chosen by the word of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus. I am writing to God's holy people in Ephesus who are faithful followers of Christ Jesus. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. And I say Amen. From verse 1, I recognize something. That the will of God takes preeminence above all things. The will of God comes first, and then he chooses those through whom his will will be done. And only God knows the basis of this choosing. Only he understands the pre-qualification criteria. In Ephesians 2 and verse 10, the word of God tells us that we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. What is clear, based on the characters we see in the Bible, is that God does not have the kind of criteria that are easily visible to man. And this is clear when we look at the scripture in 1 Samuel 16 and verse 7, which says that the Lord doesn't see things the way you see them. People judge by outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. God looks at the heart. But you know what? Even we as men, when we hear this, I don't think we really know what this means. From our perspective, looking at the heart could perhaps be that the person is kind, that the person is patient, is good to people, that the person seems to love God, and all these things are true. But we also tend to dimension our perspectives of the hearts of people through their behaviors. But only God can see the truest state of our hearts. Only God can discern by the power of the Holy Spirit our motives and intents in their truest form. And that is why till today, you and I are still many times surprised by the workings of God when it comes to whom he chooses to do his work, to deliver on certain assignments, to be the apostles of Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 11 in the Amplified Version, it says this, For what person knows the thoughts and motives of a man, except the man's spirit within him? So also, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. My brother and sister, there are only two people that know the heart of a man, the man himself and God. And God is able to go deeper than I am than you are when it comes to matters of our hearts. God peels the layers of the onions of our hearts until he gets to the very core. My prayer today for me and for you is that God will take you and I deeper on this journey to truly begin to examine and know our own hearts and to allow him to continuously do a work of refining so that our hearts are fully aligned with his will and so that as his chosen ones, as apostles of Jesus Christ, we will not walk out of alignment with the assignment for which he called us to the earth in the first place. And I ask God to help us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. In verse 2 of Ephesians 1, Paul prays for God to give them grace and peace. And I believe this is what Paul himself was carrying that allowed him to do the things that God had him do. And this is what you and I therefore should always desire as we journey along. Grace to stay faithful to the assignment, no matter how difficult, no matter how men might judge us or view us, no matter the obstacles and challenges along the way. In 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 8, the Bible tells us that God is able to make all grace abound towards us, so that having all sufficiency in all things, at all times, we may abound in every good work. This is my prayer that we will see this manifest in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. The other thing Paul then prayed for was peace. Because you see, my brother and sister, when we have God's peace, the God kind of peace, the one that surpasses all understanding, then regardless of the vagaries and vicissitudes of life as they are buffeting us daily, it's easier for us to stay focused, to stay aligned, and not to give in to the wavering of our spirit, which is something that does not please God. Remember that in James 1 verse 6 to 8, and I read from the NLT, it says, 
when you ask God, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver. For a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as the waves of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. And such people should not expect to receive anything from God because their loyalty is divided between God and the world and they are unstable in everything that they do. So let's ask this morning for a fresh infilling of the God kind of peace that keeps us stayed and focused on Him in Jesus' mighty name. Somehow, my brother and sister, I couldn't get past this word chosen. Chosen. What does it mean to be chosen? As it ministered to me, chosen implies that there was an assessment done and that I was then determined by God to be fit for the work. You were determined by God to be fit for the work, to be thoroughly equipped. And you know what? Even in the natural, you cannot choose a person from assi- an as- for an assignment If you cannot see things in them that match your expectations, if you cannot see that they have the capacity to grow into the more advanced stages of the assignment, if you cannot see that they have what it takes, and only God can see this. Remember, He's the one that knows us. He knew us before He formed us and put us in our mother's wombs, according to Jeremiah 1 and verse 5. He's the one who named us and saw named us ever before we knew who we were. God is also the God that knows the end from the beginning. He's the God that knows all and sees all. He's the God that is eternity, past, present, and to come. He is the one who laid out the full picture of the puzzle that life appears to be to man, and who knows where every tiny piece is supposed to fit and why. So when God chooses us, when he chooses a path for us, we need to stay in that place of trust, And we need to not allow our human insecurities to override God's voice in our ears and the impressions of his word in our hearts and in our spirits. But God will unfold to us as we stay faithful and committed in alignment with his will what it is that he has called us to the world for. For this is all about his will. This is all about his good pleasure. This is all about his purpose for mankind. This is about kingdom. Proverbs 3 verse 5 to 6 says that we should trust in the Lord with all our hearts and lean not on our own understanding, to submit to him in all our ways and he will make our path straight. But here's the thing, when we think about being chosen by God, like I said, it calls for trust. And you cannot trust who you don't know. And knowing God comes from the place of intimacy. It comes from the place of constantly seeking his presence and not his works. Intimacy comes from loving God's presence and yielding to his spirit. It comes from searching out his word with frequency and consistency, with praying, with meditation. It comes from loving, being in the place of worship and adoration of this amazing God that we serve. In growing in intimacy with God, therefore, you and I become increasingly sensitive to his voice and therefore more aligned to his will. In the place of intimacy, we grow spiritually, and therefore as we grow, we grow in trust, and we grow in confidence. We grow in confidence in this God and his good and perfect plans for our lives. When we get to this place of increasing trust, of a consistent journey, of growing in Christ, we become more and more Christ-minded. Remember, the Bible says we have the mind of Christ and we walk in this more so as we journey in the place of intimacy. In the place of intimacy, our character and our thinking become increasingly aligned to that Christ identity as we also grow in the manifestation of the fruits of the Spirit. And on this journey, my brother and sister, our hearts will be increasingly recreated to fully mirror the heart of Christ the reason that he chose us in the first place. You and I should not question our choosing, my brother and sister. No matter what, what we need to do is to stay yielded to this journey of refining, to stay in the place of trust, and to remain grateful that for reasons unknown to us, for criteria unclear to us, that God has counted us worthy and he has chosen us in accordance with his will, as we are told in Ephesians 1 and verse 1. I accept my identity as an apostle of Christ Jesus, and I invite you to do the same. 
I accept the work that I must do and that I must let God do in me. And I receive today the grace of God and his peace to succeed in delivering every measure of glory to God that I can on this journey. I receive the grace to stay in alignment with his will. And I speak same over you today in the mighty name of Jesus. My brother and my sister, God is calling you today to recognize yourself afresh in him, to see yourself through the lenses of the Christ identity as one that is chosen by the will of God, as one that is called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus, as one that he is willing freely to daily load with grace and peace for the journey that is ahead. I ask you to embrace this identity today. And I ask in Jesus' name, Father, that even as this word has gone, for, gone forth, that my brother and sister listening will be fully yielded to the work that you want to do in recreating our hearts daily to bring us to the place where we fully mirror that Christ identity that is the cause for which you have chosen us by your will. Lord, let this word find full expression in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. If you are listening and you are not yet born again, and you don't have this deep committed relationship with Christ Jesus, then I welcome you into the fold. I ask you to just today yield yourself, yield your heart, yield your being fully to God. Believe that he formed you for his express purpose and he's calling you into this place of alignment so that he can begin to do these good works that he prepared beforehand that you should walk in according to Ephesians 2 verse 10. So please say with me today, dear Jesus, my master and my king. I come to you and I yield myself to you fully. I lay myself prostrate before you and I declare myself a sinner in need of your saving grace. Father, take over my life. Come into my heart. Come and be my Lord and my savior. Lord, I choose from today to journey with you. I acknowledge you as the son of God, the one that came to this earth and died for my sin. Father, I agree that I am your chosen one. Help me, O oh Lord, to grow in the place of the knowledge of you, the intimacy of you, that all the days of my life I will walk with you in alignment with your will, that my life will deliver glory to you in Jesus' mighty name. If you've prayed this prayer, welcome into the kingdom of God. I promise you, you will never regret this decision. There is nothing as beautiful as a life that is fully yielded to Christ. There is nothing as glorious of knowing of the truth that your eternity in heaven with Christ, with God, with the Spirit of God is secured. I bless you, my brother and my sister. I thank you all for listening. I pray that this has ministered to you. And I ask that as God keeps us, you stay steadfast in this place of yieldedness. And I look forward to seeing you on our next conversation on Zimozo, Kingdom Conversations on the pathways of life. God bless you.